Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Duffy Duck here once again, and I'm Sylvester here. We are back for yet again with the Muxy Toys videos. So, welcome back to more as play of Sonic Adventure 2 or Sonic Adventure 2 Battle for the Sega Dreamcast, Nintendo GameCube, Xbox Live Arcade, PlayStation Network, and PC Steam version. So, yes, last time we actually did kick out the likes of Shadows Butt in the, um, during the Under um, Forest area. And also we managed to explore the Green Forest before we actually escaped the Prison Island. And also we managed to deal with two Knuckles' stages, which are both Pumpkin Hill and especially um, Aquatic Mine. And we also did manage to briefly deal with Mission Street with Tails. And today for this episode, we're about to continue on and move on to the next new type of st uh, gameplay style, which is in form of these little racing segments. If you ever played Twinkle Circuit before from um, Sonic Adventure 1, you know exactly how these little racing mechanics are usually act up for this game. Although, gradually though, we don't usually explore this space open uh, world level, so instead we're actually driving through the city or something like that, so... Because usually speaking of such though, so if you watched the previous cutscene from the last video, is that Tails' tornado has been somehow changed into a card shape formation, which is a little bit strange. But yes, if you ever played any other Mario Kart games before as well, you probably exactly know what the controls actually look like. Basically, you hold down the A button to accelerate, or the X button if you ever played the, um, the, uh, the PlayStation 3 version. And also, if you, I believe if you're trying to press the B button or the square button in the PlayStation 3 version, it might actually act as a brake button. And finally, the, uh, the Y button can actually perform itself a special boost feature, which, speaking of such though, is that um, if you're trying to actually perform a boost, you're going to have to be sure you need to either do like, you can do it in two different ways you can actually get some of these boost features. For one, you can either get uh, these little star balloons, which actually adds up to your rings count. And speaking of rings count, I believe you're going to have to be sure you have to reach up to more likely 20 rings each in order to actually just to actually access to the boost feature, so... And then while doing so is by basically just pressing the Y button, or... I'm presuming the triangle button on the PlayStation 3 version, although I'm presuming in the Xbox 360 version, I'm pretty sure it's going to be more likely... I think it's going to be Y button or something like that, but even then, that's, um, that's far as I'm concerned for that, so... Yeah, basically in this mission right here, is that, uh, or in this case, in this stage right here, is that uh, similar to how it does it if you ever played any other arcade machines of these little racing dramas, is that, as you can see on the top left corner, you have to keep an eye on your time limit, so even then though, if your time runs out, then you have to restart the whole level. And even then though, that um, especially noticeable, the another way you can actually restart the whole level, whole entire level, is the fact that you can actually die on this particular stage. So anyways, we eventually found ourselves our president right here, because that's the next ultimate premise of the goal right here. So even then though, we have to um, solve this mystery and see how this finds out. So, ah, oh, great. We still got B rank. We haven't got A since um, Green Forest, or even Pumpkin Hill as a result. But even then, I think it's primarily due to the fact that we actually gone slow enough in these specific turns or sharp turns. But anyways, after when you beat this level, then you can actually access this uh, next additional mode into this in this game, card racing. Mr. President, reports show that since the incident three hours ago, the country is in turmoil. Our financial communities are impacted, and our satellite communications are down. An emergency meeting has been called. Mr. President, this is a national crisis. Spare me the details. Exactly just what is it that you want? Dr. Eggman? <laughs> well, let's just get down to business then, shall we, Mr. President? I won't bore you with all the details since I know you are a very busy man. Mr. President, my demands are quite simple. Surrender to the Eggman Empire and make no attempts to resist. Otherwise... Otherwise... Otherwise, your country will cease to exist. You have 24 hours to give me your answer. No way! What the? <laughs> Sonic! Man, you! Yeah, right. What the heck's going on here? Don't oh, worry, no. Mr. President. What did Everything's you do? under control. Just leave it to us. You got a tail? I got it! He's transmitting from the space colony R! Okay, let's move it! Wait up, Sonic! Hey, you, wait! Mr. President, we're receiving an incoming signal from our agent.
inside that pyramid? I saw Eggman go inside the pyramid. And more importantly, I saw that Batgirl go inside with him as well. Well, you saw them too, right? Yeah. Should be able to get into outer space from there. I don't know what this space colony is all about, but I'll find and destroy that kid, and then kick their Imperial butts. All right. I'll go and find the entrance. And now we're going to go back into Tails once again, but this time the likes of the Hidden Base, stage number 10, find the entrance into the Hidden Base. So this level can be kind of annoying at points, especially noticeable if there's some situations, although we'll get into those until we get into just a moment. But for the time being, let's go ahead and just hold, um, hover across this little sand pit, or this quicksand, because as you can tell, if you somehow fall off into this quicksand, you'll instantly die, so you just have to be very careful right there, so... As you probably expected, just like it does it in, uh, Shifting Sandland from Super Mario 64, if you stand onto this quicksand for too long or something like that, then, uh, basically you instantly lose a life, so... Now we ended up in this little pyramid-themed level, which kind of feels more likely a different side of things, although technically in the original Sonic Adventure game that we already explored the, uh, the sandy, um, um, desert beans level before, which was on the um, sand hill, but the only time we can only access to it is with Tails, because, you know, Tails has the ability to actually fly, so, and especially noticeable if, if they think about, um, in addition to Sonic and especially Metal Sonic in at least the Adventure DX version, that, um, both these, um, uh, both of those Sonics can actually play um, Sam Hill just in time, so... This is where the, um, the hidden base um, stays can get really, really annoying, especially for the likes of cheap enemy placements that it comes in apply, because it's especially noticeable if you're going way too fast at this point, then sometimes you might actually think you accidentally, ru um, accidentally run into things, like, instantly, quite easily, so... And this is especially apparent if we're actually going to be doing the secondary mission on this particular game, because yes, uh, just like in Sonic Adventure 1, there you actually have yourselves additional missions to actually re uh, uh, you know, revisit some of them, some of these missions from the, um, the time attack mode or the stage selection screen. So even then, like, you know in Adventure 1 that you only have like three missions to your disposal, which all consist of like collecting enough rings in some cases, while other times you're actually going to be uh, racing against with someone with a safe and much more faster, and then other times you have to beat the level for a certain amount of time. And also that, um, yeah, that's all I have to think about for the time, so... Oh, right, we got an extreme rank. Because, yeah, um, for these, um, uh, mech shooting levels, they do remind me of almost related to E102 Gamma Store, um, uh, gameplay style from Sonic Adventure 1. But except the fact that, although, you don't have to worry about the time limit thing, unlike E102 Gamma does, so even then, that the time itself is going forward, so no need to actually just, uh, rush forward and stuff like that. So you just have to take your time and get used to what the controls and stuff, so... But yeah, there's one thing I actually know something, is that, um, I'm assuming that, um, I can't really exactly have to describe about this at this point in time, but even then, um, now Knuckles is still mentioned about the bad girl, which even then, though, he doesn't know her name yet until when we get to the, um, um, the latest parts of the game, or even then, um, to the actual, um, main history of the Sonic franchise just to begin with, though, so, anyway. So completely enough though is that we pretty much at the halfway point of Hero's story so far because obviously that this game wasn't as nearly as long as um, Sonic Adventure 1 does because you have to deal with um, um, six individual character story plot elements and also that judging by the fact that now we're actually going to be doing a combination of those uh, three characters in one story so that they um, they share uh, different levels to each other so granted it does have the, uh, the, the, uh, the exact same themes but uh, different levels layout, so yeah, that's as far as I can see for this. Anyway, let's go ahead and bust out these little robotic looking doors, and as you can see right there, we actually come across into those ancient looking tablets thing, which we can't come across into that, because obviously we haven't got a power to do so, because we can't do anything about it. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and just not get hit by the bombs, because if we get hit by the bombs, then we're pretty much going to be die so easily like this. So even though, well, hopefully if we're actually just trying to avoid as many quick centers as possible, so... But even then, though, every once in a while, though, that we, there are some of uh, um, those familiar bad necks, since the likes of the original Sonic Adventure game do make to return, like this little monkey-looking uh, bad necks, which once again, it'll toss the bombs at you, so... 
somewhat similar to how it does in the original game, or in this case, the, um, the first game in the series. So anyways, let's go ahead and do a little bit of a combo syndrome, just to actually just rank up some points. Because yes, most likely it does in E102 Gamma, you can actually build up with your combos until you actually get yourselves a ton of points. Which I think is a definition of recommendation to do so, especially if you want, if you want to get, if you desperately want to get an A rank on those uh, next shooting levels, be sure to actually build up with your combos immediately. So, and then if you're trying to actually hold down the uh, the shooting button immediately, then just let go as soon as you actually pull off the combo with points. So, all right, we got an A rank, despite the fact that we actually got um, the first death on this particular stage, thanks to this cheap enemy placement. In fact, um, no matter what though, we're constantly dying on uh, the max shooting levels, unlike um, the faster running stages or even the treasure hunting levels. So anyway, now we're going back to Sonic since um, Green Forest and now we're going to be taking on Infiltrate Eggman's hidden base in the likes of Stage 11 Pyramid Cave. So, so yeah, it has been a while since we actually come back to Sonic's gameplay style because, you know, again, since um, um, Green Forest, because even then, though, that most of the time that we're actually going to be running to uh, max shooting levels, especially with the treasure hunting um, stages every once in a while, but even then, I was hoping if they don't actually uh, force you to actually go through every single stage as from, um, you know, for the majority of it, but anyway, so right off the bat, though, we can actually go through those rings for some reason, even then, though, it's not like... Um, the tedious um, snub, uh, Superman 64 syndrome, but even then, oh god, there's Omochel. Yeah, Omochel's first appearance in this entire Sonic franchise is actually in this game, and what he does is that every time when you walk, pa uh, if you walk past him, then he gives you a little bit of a brief tutorial. But honestly, screw him, because obviously we already play the game from time to time, and plus we're the master of it, so yeah, it's not much to discuss. So. I really do love this music though, it, it, it does remind me of almost like, I don't know what I think about it for the time. Okay, here we go, here we have ourselves our new upgrade for Sonic, and it's the form of the Bounce Bracelet, which this allows you to actually bounce as soon as you actually jump in mid-air, and you can actually do a bounce attack. And also what's unique about this is that if you're trying to press the B button when you're on the ground, then you can actually just uh, bounce higher enough into the higher ledges, so it's pretty interesting. Are oh, these burnings are supposed to be E102 Gamma or something like that? I mean, it looks very similar to um, E102 Gamma, but except that it doesn't usually show E102 anymore. So I believe these are, I believe it's essentially E100 or something like that this time around. Even though it does share the exact same color as the E102 Gamma, but even that is, except it's called it now uh, E100 robot, so. I do miss that E102 Gamma, honestly, but even though, uh, although it just, it does make perfect sense, because in the first game that, um, he died after the explosion attack, or even just the, the shooting bullets and stuff like that. Because, you know, after the events of the ending of, um, E102 Gamma story segment in Sonic Adventure 1, that you probably noticed that the, um, the birdie did actually got released from, um, E102 Gamma or something, so... Anyway, as far as Pyramid Cave is concerned, it feels more like a mismatch between sometimes platforming and other times puzzle gimmicks. Like, for instance, we got to carry this little uh, white knot thing right here until we actually reach over to this little uh, corresponding spot, which is usually towards over there. Granted, we've already done that once, but even though it's really easy, but you have to carry this last one of them until you actually just do some quite a few platforming segments. So, here and here, another thing is worth mentioning though is that we have to constantly um, flipping those hourglasses until when the door is about to activate, so... So for this sequence right there, we have to be really, really fast, especially with these little ghosts that are trying to annoy you every once in a while, because if you get hugged into a ghost, there's no way you can actually clip, uh, go through the door, so... Especially if you actually completely ignore these little ring segments, like we did that right there. Granted, it might actually help you this much until you get the A rank, but it's nothing worthless though, so anyway... Oh wow, we got great. That's only because we actually go through these doors in, in, in one run, so even then, that makes it a little bit more perfect sense. So yeah, um, there's not much I can say about Pyramid Park, it's basically, or oh, Pyramid Cave, I should say. I almost said Pyramid Park. I think it's mainly due to the fact that we're constantly picking up the name for Mario Party 7. Oh yeah, that was probably my fault. But anyway, um, I guess there's not much else we can think about doing for this stage. It's just basically constantly flipping those hourglasses every once in a while. Even then, it does remind me of almost related to um, the Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass um, syndrome. Like, you have to use this off the, um, the hourglass most of the time. But, except the fact that we're not dealing with that entire hourglass within the, um, 
the um, Temple of the Ocean King on the, um, the Phantom Hourglass, because even then, that, I know for a lot of Zelda fans out there, that um, Temple of the Ocean King is by far the worst temple in the game, due to the fact you have to deal with a time limit and stuff like that, which is, it makes perfect sense. Oh, right, we got an A rank, that fantastic. Cool. Despite the fact that we it completely ignored the, um, the ring segment on the second um, segment of this little um, um, hourglass sequence. So now we ended up in Eggman's base. Looks like we're heading toward the center of the base. That egghead sure loves mechanical things, doesn't he? I'll bet he has one or two spaceships lying around here somewhere. The door is locked. We need a key to get in there. No problem. We can find it. Right, Knuckles? What? Why do I have to find the key? We're counting on you, buddy. The world's greatest treasure hunter. And now we ended up back to Knuckles yet again, and now we ended up in Death Chamber, stage number 12. And rather than just actually finding three pieces of the Master Emerald, instead, we're gonna be finding three of these gates, um, doors, or in this case, this little gate keys. And right off the bat, though, before you start the level up, I highly suggest you go ahead and grab the, um, the third upgrade for Knuckles, known as Hammer Gloves. Which are basically equivalent to fighting gloves from Sonic Adventure 1, but except the fact that um you can uh, you can now actually realize it's about his attack range is a lot more powerful, and also by judging by Okay, quick air right there, sorry about that folks. I have to restart the whole entire level just because the fact that I certainly seem to realize that I seem to got confused and lost. Because uh, well, for whatever reason, we got the first key and uh, no problem. However, the between the third key and the second key, oh for the love of god, it's like a lab work basically. So anyway, so we have to restart the whole level again, and as you can tell, our lives count is lost, just like how it does in Adventure 1. So even then uh, there goes uh, another extra life, so I really do apologize for that. So anyways, I believe we found ourselves our first key right here. So even then that we can actually just find it here somewhere. And I'm hoping it's not as like as hard until we actually get into the last stage for him. But even then, no, we're not getting to that until later. So anyway, uh, as for fighting up, uh, or in this case, hammer gloves in this game, that uh, it's more likely equivalent to um, fighting gloves from Adventure One. But even then, though, that much like Adventure One is that uh, basically his attack radius has actually gone increased. And also that uh, you can actually now break this um, iron crate so that you can normally couldn't do that from um, earlier ago. So now we can actually have the ability to break for those metal crates because these are these little metal variations of those little crates as you probably break through them. But obviously we can't actually break those metal crates with Sonic or Tails yet. So anywho. So, as far as this level's concerned, it's more likely a lap with um, build to it, but even then, though, as, as we mentioned earlier, rather than actually collecting the three pieces, missing pieces of the Master Emerald, because, you know, instead we have to find those missing keys until we actually go inside the actual um, Eggman's base to begin with, so that's the only major differences between here and there. So, a uh, few things we wanted to briefly mention about this is that, oh, there's our uh, second key is going to get closer. I'm assuming it's going to be on the lower level of this little ceiling part. So, even then, that we can actually hopefully try to grab it from here. In fact, there's one here. Perfect. Ah, oh, done it. Why did you do that? Sorry about this, Duffy. I did not know I was expecting that. You shouldn't just go after the gliding, the, um, the, the goddamn flame. Huh, <sighs> there goes our another extra life in this level, which is pretty, uh, mediocre, but anyway, um, uh, much like how it does in Sonic Adventure 1, after when you're trying to grab the, um, the, uh, these items that you've already gotten throughout the entire stage, you still manage to keep it forever, it's not like you actually instantly lose them all, so even then, it's not that much of an issue, so, I believe the third and final one is going to be on this area right here somewhere, so, and before we actually end this episode off that, we actually now finally got ourselves our brand new DVD we actually got today. Or in this case, just recently. Now it's the form of Moana, which um, I was been waiting for this film for so long now. But even then, uh, that, um, don't spoil this to us if you actually don't, if we haven't seen it yet. But even then, uh, I will recently watch it for ourselves. So even then, I'm really looking forward to actually watching the entire thing. So, yeah, pretty excited. So, I think we'll start to end things off here, so join me and Duffy next time on Let's Play Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, is that I'm assuming we're gonna have to fight against with the next boss in the game, so... Yeah, yeah we'll take a B-Rank, because we actually got an instant death from that, um, flame after we didn't get any rings at all. That's probably, uh, my fault right there, so see you guys next time. Later, fellas.